Hello Matrix and welcome to the 11th video on calculus brought to you by the answer series. In this video we will look at a graph, its derivative and its second derivative. I've repeated a slide from the previous video so just to remind you what is happening with the point of inflection and where the graph is concave up and where it is concave down. Example number one. I want you to pause the video. I want you to try this yourself and then we'll do it together. So the question asks you to draw on the same set of axes the derivative of the original cubic graph. Now remember what we had is as follows. At a turning point, the derivative is zero. So at a turning point, my graph of the derivative will have an x-intercept. Here's another turning point. So again, the derivative will have an x-intercept. This is a cubic graph with a negative a value. So what kind of graph is the derivative? It's going to be a parabola with arms going down. So there's a graph of the derivative of the original graph I gave you. Example number two. Notice very carefully I have given you the graph of the derivative. So this is the derivative and I ask you a whole lot of questions about the original function. So what I want you to do is I want you to pause the video. I want you to think very carefully about this one. Try it and then we'll do it together. The first question says to you write down the gradient of the tangent to f of x at x equals naught. Now remember the gradient of a tangent that means the derivative so what you want to know is what is the derivative when x is 0? Well, when x is 0, my y value is 8. This graph is my derivative graph. So when x is 0, the derivative is 8. So the gradient is 8. 2.2 says write down the x values of the turning points of f. Now remember in the previous video, when you have a turning point on f, you get an x-intercept on the derivative. So that means that the x-intercepts of the derivative come from the turning points of f. So where do you get a turning point on the original graph? It's at the two x-intercepts of the derivative. 2.3 says to you, for what values of x is f of x increasing? Now f of x increases when the derivative is positive. Okay, f of x increases when the derivative is positive. This is the derivative graph. So where is this graph positive? It's positive above the x-axis. So where's my derivative graph positive? It's when x is less than 2 or when x is greater than 4. So where's f of x increasing? It's when the derivative is positive. In other words, when x is less than 2 or when x is greater than 4. Number 2.4 says, for what values of x will f of x have a local maximum? Now remember what's happening is as follows. My derivative is a parabola whose arms go up. So f of x is going to be a cubic with a positive a value. So I've said to you, for what value of x will f of x have a local maximum? It has a local maximum there, which means it is at the left point of my x-intercepts. It's the left-hand x-intercept that's giving me a local maximum because the local minimum is to the right of it, 
which would be there. So where does f of x have a local maximum? It's when x is equal to 2. 2.5 says to you, for what values of x is f of x concave down? Now remember, a graph is concave down when the derivative is decreasing. This is my derivative graph. So where is the derivative decreasing? It's decreasing there. What's that point in the middle? It's when x is 3. So where is my original graph concave down? It's when x is less than 3. The last question, I ask you to draw the second derivative on the same set of axes as the derivative. Now remember, at a turning point, my gradient is 0. So when I draw the second derivative, I get an x-intercept at that point. My derivative is a parabola whose arms go up. So my second derivative is going to be a straight line with a positive gradient. Example number three. I want you to pause the video. I want you to try this yourself and then we'll do it together. Again, I've given you the derivative, so we need to work backwards. So this is the answer to the derivative. So I've got to think, the derivative of what will give me minus 4x? Well, the derivative of minus 2x squared will give me minus 4x. The derivative of what will give me plus 7? So the derivative of plus 7x will give me plus 7. So the derivative of this part is minus 4x plus 7. But you know that the derivative of a constant is 0. So I need to put a plus c on the end because this number here could have been anything. The derivative of that is 0. It wouldn't have appeared in my derivative at all. Now they've given me another piece of information. They've said that f of 1 is equal to minus 3. In other words, when x is 1, y is minus 3. So what I do, what I've worked out for f of x, in place of x goes 1, and in place of y goes minus 3, and I solve for c. And there I have determined f of x. You should now understand about a graph, its derivative, and its second derivative. Thank you for watching this video. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from The Answer Series your key to exam success.